Dean Daniel here, thanking all of our patrons, but especially Hedwig, Carlo, and a socialist hobgoblin for their support. Thank you all so Ooh, very much. Excuse me, I was talking. I know. I don't care. What? Notice anything different about your D20? Oh, God, no. Yes, that's right. I put all the numbers in the wrong place. Hey, why do you do these things to me? <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Probably Bad Podcast, a podcast which is definitely bad. I'm Pencil. I'm Paper. And today's Probably Bad RPG idea is... Super optimise all the ducks in the campaign setting. Before we start, I'd like to apologise for the fact that I'm recording this from inside a tin can. I am moving and all of my normal stuff is in storage. But... Duck. What I like about this idea is that it doesn't specify what the ducks are optimized for. Super optimize all the ducks to be perfect um, politicians. Entirely duck-based society. See, that raises the question of, you know, what would a duck consider to be optimized? Like, what would a duck look at and go, this is the perfect duck body? So what it is, it's a normal duck, except instead of a head, it has a hoover that sucks up all bread within, like, a mile radius. A duck that's completely normal, except that its penis is also a normal shape. <laughs> that idea brought to you by Lady Ducks. I like the idea that a super-optimised duck is just a normal duck, because ducks don't have human self-esteem issues. Ducks accept themselves as they are. All ducks are beautiful. <laughs> all ducks are beautiful in their own way, unlike humans who are all hideous meat piles. In their own way. Yes. Technically, whether you go to the upper planes or lower planes in D&D is determined based on how similar you are to a duck. The more duck-like you are, the higher your odds of going into heaven. So if I say covered myself in lanolin in an effort to be waterproof would that increase my chances of going to heaven yeah you, that that is how you achieve salvation that's what jesus did to people it was, it was just mistranslated i mean he, yes. he was oily josh yeah that's why he was oiling people oh, no. I, I think we've entered the blasphemy stage of the idea discussion too early we have, and also moved somewhat away from optimizing ducks. I so, want to optimize ducks for combat. Yeah, I feel like this is probably in the D and D sense of optimizing them to be particularly good in their character classes, which implies you got a wizard duck who just launches fifteen fireballs around. Marion duck who's just attached things to its beak to make it extra heavy for whacking. Yeah. I like the idea of the big bad of this campaign being a group of, like, super-optimised ducks. But the problem is it's hard to tell sometimes which ducks are optimised and which ones are normal. Yeah. Because they do have a drug... Uh, <laughs> a a drug druid. They do have a drug. <laughs> a duck druid who can transform into different kinds of duck. Yeah. A, druk, a duck druid, or druid, um, <laughs> I think I like the idea of just, like, you're in the park, there's ducks nearby, you you, put, you you throw them some bread and you sit down, and then boom, one of the ducks turns into a, turns into a bear, and one of the ducks uses its pact of the blade to summon a, like, great sword. One and of them's then... actually a were-duck and just turns into a guy. <laughs> I like were ducks because, given where ducks live, like most of the time, it'll turn into a guy and just be naked in a in a river. So druids, yeah. We anglerfish, of course, have the worst odds of anyone. I mean, I was thinking were blobfish. Hmm. I feel any weird deep sea fish. Is... It's going to have problems. Yeah. 
course, the real question is, you know, werewolf is a wolf one to three days a month in in most like yeah. mythologies. Is it uh, so? And would identify themselves as human before a wolf. So, is a re- is a were duck a duck, or is it a guy who is sometimes a duck? I would assume it would be a guy who is sometimes a duck. Um, when you turn to a weird duck, do you go on a what, what rampage do you go on? It's a very good question. I mean, the only time I've seen a duck do a violence was when it bit my sister. Okay, so when you turn to a weird duck, you specifically track down Mod Paper's sister. But yeah, it's like you know, vampires are really into virgins. Weird ducks are really into small children who just want to say hello. Yeah. I was trying to imagine how you would super optimize a duck for something like a bard. <laughs> like what is what is the most charismatic duck? I think like to be fair, there are more or less charismatic ducks. Like you go there and there's like one duck that's like a hideous scraggled little monster. And then there is one beautiful duck who is stood there shining on a pile of garbage. So you take that duck, you train it to talk, you give it a loot, uh, you probably do some stuff with feats and skill points or something. I'm not actually very good at the mechanical side of D&D. And then you have a duck that can force anyone around it to Macarena for 24 hours. Forgot about that spell. Also, I feel like the bard is probably a mandarin duck. Yeah. They just have that look to them. Yeah. They are very beautiful ducks. Like, I've, I've just sent Pencil a picture of a mandarin duck. This that... means absolutely nothing to any of you. I mean, they can, they can look up what a mandarin duck looks like. <laughs> I, I just joke. feel like this is a duck that would wander into a tavern and immediately sleep with everyone in the vicinity. Yeah, that is a duck but, that you is... Know, in a duck way. That That is horrible. Like... There's a duck that wants attention. I mean, that too. I think Duck Warlock is the interesting one because it does imply Asmodeus is seeking out the soul of a duck. I mean, we, we don't know his life. Asmodeus <laughs> is just like, hell is too full of people and not enough ducks. Because as we've established, the less like a duck you are, the more yeah, exactly. like you are to go to hell. Hell has very few duck-like entities. I mean, it doesn't have to be Asmodeus. True. I mean, they they just added, didn't they, D and D, um, undead warlocks. Maybe Strahd just wants to hang out with a duck. <laughs> it's the only thing that will soothe his tortured soul. He's taking a break from his search for b- bizarre soulmate weirdness and he just wants to bother a duck for a bit i raise you the soulmate whose name i can't remember has been reborn as a duck and then stroud tries to get her interest by becoming her warlock patron yes i mean i feel like deciding a duck is your soulmate is the very definition of bothering a duck that that would bother me (laughs) yeah i mean that's why he's a villain he bothers ducks and thus will go to hell when he dies for being anti-duck. Also, I forgot that bothering a duck is not a thing that everyone thinks about. Because it's it's just from a Tumblr post about a, a um, bionic hand. I apologise to anyone who hasn't put in the requisite reading for listening to this podcast. I'm sorry. <laughs> please, uh, f- please fill out your tests and send them to probably bad podcast at gmail.com what would be the motivation of a big bad duck beyond you know capturing all of the bakers and forcing them to make bread for him even though we know that bread is bad for ducks i feel like i like the idea of like their motivation is completely unrelated to them being a duck like they're a ceo of a company and they're trying to like destroy some virgin woodland and your druid party has to stop them and the fact that they're a super optimized warlock duck is completely irrelevant to any of it. They're going to war with the terrapins. Hmm. 
Because terrapins eat baby ducks, and if, if that isn't a village a villain origin story, I don't know what is. This is full on sad dad duck. It is a duck whose parents were eaten by by ter- not parents were eaten by terrapins. It's a duck whose baby was eaten by terrapin. Um, at which point it made a bargain with Osmodius for power, and now is using mind control powers to take over the kingdom. One person who goes like sitting at the park at a time in order to declare war on terrapins. I can't help but feel Asmodeus in this situation like would 100% go along with it, but purely just in a fuck around and find out kind of way. Yeah, like, like you know. What happens when I give cosmic power to a duck? There's only one way to find <laughs> out. To be honest, I feel that that sentence is a good start for an RPG in general. Someone has decided they're going to give cosmic power to a duck. Yeah. <laughs> Someone is me. For a thousand Patreon um, reward, I will bestow cosmic power on a duck. I like it. It's a bold claim. Yeah. <laughs> At our at our thousand dollar Patreon tier, choose one duck of your choice. I will give it cosmic powers. Picked it up. Our thousand dollar tier is just called "Why Would You Do This?" For um, ten for ten thousand dollars, I will bestow ducks unto you and fill your house with ducks, all of whom have cosmic powers. So this feels like a good point to move to questions. For a hundred thousand, I will say... surgically edit myself into a duck. As I was saying, this seems like a good point to move on to questions. Um, and also a good point to say, because I don't think we've said it on the podcast yet. Um, our editor, Nick, has been working on a YouTube poop of the first Dungeons & Dragons movie. And it will be posted on our YouTube once we hit 50 patrons. We're currently at about 20. So we've got plenty of time for it to be optimized like a duck. <laughs> so our first question is from Anonymous. I'm looking for a horrible idea for the Eldritch Night I'm making to make it stand out a bit more. Any suggestions? So I'm not particularly up on fighter subclasses just because I find pretty much every other class more interesting. Um, but there is an ability for Eldritch Knight, which is that you you have a magical bond with your weapon. So, so my first thought is just expand on that and become best friends with your weapon. Possibly lovers if you want to take it in that direction. The weapon in this context is not a sentient weapon. It's just just a weapon. Well, you can be bonded with up to two weapons. So what if one is sentient and one isn't, and it's all just very awkward? <laughs> I think what I would go for is that instead of like being an eldritch knight, you are a fighter and a wizard who are tied together. Your best friends with your weapon, who is a wizard. Yes. You have grabbed the party wizard by the legs and are swinging them at enemies. Like a three-legged race D&D. Yeah. What it is, is your character is a, is a half-orc and this is very tall. Mm-hmm. So they've grabbed the halfling wizard and are using them as a bludgeoning weapon as the halfling wizard to cast spells while being swung. And then your other hand is a warlock duck. Yeah. As you fight your way through the terrapin infested dungeon. As if when you squeeze the duck, it does an eldritch blast out of its mouth like one of those squeezy duck toys. Do we know for sure that there are teddy ducks that do that? I have never squeezed a duck. I have like, never squeezed a duck. Like if you squeeze a warlock, the eldritch blast. Well, yeah, that's that's in the PHB. Yeah. Also, I'd like to... Um, so Eldritch Knight gets an ability called War Magic, which just means they can 
use when they cast a cantrip, they can also attack. But I like the idea of they just have a cannon, which you have a bond with, and it's full of ducks. You, you, you don't have a bond with the ducks. You don't care about the ducks. No. Which is good, because that would make what you're about to do heartbreaking. <laughs> but you're friends so, with the cannon. <laughs> so I like the idea of like, being bonded with the ammo. So like, you have weapon bond, but you're not bonded with the bow. You're bonded with one specific arrow. I feel like that would be less horrifying than being bonded with the ducks in the duck cannon, though. Well, yeah, it'd be less horrifying. Because the arrow might survive. <laughs> I just, I just love the image of dragon appears and you're just sobbingly putting ducks into a cannon and firing them at the dragon. One of the ducks puts its wing on your arm and just says, I understand. <laughs> I'm sorry, General Quackers. <laughs> All the ducks have Oh cartoon- no, don't name the ducks! All the ducks have cartoonishly stupid names and you've got to tragically set heart, like, heart-wrenchingly say all of them as you put them in the cannon and they're fired to their death. It does make every round take about 10 minutes in-game. <laughs> yeah. But everyone just waits around to hear what the next duck, duck name is. This is a version of Eldritch Knight with very high charisma so that everyone will stop and listen to your duck names. It does also help if you have high charisma IRL. True. Okay, so the magical bond um, does mean that you can teleport it to your hand. So you can fire the duck at the enemy and then teleport it back to your hand for a respectful burial. So you're just stood by a grave. Respectful burial ducks. of just some shredded roast duck. Yeah, you're, you're stood next to a grave, you're shooting ducks at the enemy, and after they hit, you teleport them back, put them in the grave, say a few words, uh, again, to general quackers, and then you put next duck in. But the state that the duck's going to be in at that point, like, you might as well respectfully bury it in a pancake and some hoisin sauce. <laughs> so you're sitting there, tearfully eating the ducks as you teleport them into your mouth. It's what they would have wanted! Eldritch necrocannibalism. I mean, I feel this will certainly be a memorable night. Yeah? Memorable in that you see it every night in your dreams and that's why you can't sleep? Yeah. Just like they can't sleep because they're still haunted by the memory of killing General Quackers. And also the ghost of General Quackers. Yes. They can now teleport the ghost of General Quackers to their hand. Yes, we're going back to the idea by optimizing the, the ducks into revenants. Mm. Then, once you've got the revenant duck, you put it in the cannon and fire that. And that'll just make it more powerful each time. Every, I think like every time it comes back, it goes a level up of Ghost. And I can't remember all the levels ups of Ghost, but it's going to get pretty powerful. What I'm imagining is it's like that one creature in Hitchhikers mm. that keeps accidentally getting killed by Arthur Dent and is just like on a multi-life vengeance quest. That's what yeah. this duck is. Yeah. So I guess we're making your Eldritch Knight more interesting by having an undead duck occasionally come and challenge it to a fight to the death, and then you put it in a cannon that you're best friends with. I I think we lost the thread somewhere. Unlike Sergeant Flaps, who doesn't hold a grudge and comes back to say they understand. That was the one who put their wing on you. Oh yeah, Sergeant Flaps is a benevolent spirit who just hangs out on your shoulder like a parrot. You have two we- two bonded weapons. Both of them are ducks that you fired at an enemy. One there of are them two hates ducks you. Beside you. One of them hates you. One of them like loves you. One always lies and one always tells the truth. And you have to figure out which of the two cannons you can put them in by asking them one question. Wait. So one of the cannons fires them at the enemy. What does the other cannon do? Fires it directly into your face. Okay, so that's the one you put them in when they've already been roasted. Yes. 
One of the cannons fires them at the enemy, and one of the cannons fires the enemy at you. It's reverse cannon. Reverse cannon? Your two bonded weapons are a cannon and re- Yeah, a cannon and a reverse cannon. And whatever the reverse cannon's fired at is launched at you at high velocity. Yeah, this doesn't admittedly require your GM be okay with weapons that are stupid and don't exist. But... I mean, that a lot of things in D&D are stupid and don't exist. Like ducks. Like, this is a game with a canonical item that <laughs> can produce a gallon of mayonnaise. Every day. I don't, I don't think we have to question... Hey, I have a great idea for an item. I have a great idea for another bonded weapon you could have. Is is it a mayonnaise grenade? No, what it is, it's a big box. Uh, You put it over the enemy, and then you start filling it with mayonnaise, so they drown in mayonnaise. The hurt locker. It's. And then you take them out and you eat them with some roast duck. So you're kind of marinating the big bad in mayonnaise. Yes. Fatally marinates the big bad. I'm not sure what that would do to the meat. There's only one way to find out. Um, I don't think we've answered your question, but... This is what you get for being anonymous. I hope you appreciate um, our ideas of kill your duck friends and marinate the big bad. Hi, I'm Hazel, and I make a podcast with Liz called Bread and Thread, which you might enjoy if you are a fan of food or clothes or other interesting parts of domestic history. We find out interesting facts about things like regional foods, ancient breeds of sheep, um, pretty much anything domestic history. So if you'd like to know why it's illegal to import a sheep into Iceland and what was presented by Queen Victoria to Harriet Tubman, then you might want to check out Bread and Thread. Find us at Bread and Thread on Twitter or find us everywhere podcasts exist. (laughs) So, our other question is from uh, Cact Me. I want to use traditional Fey rules on a Fey themed mission. I was curious if you had any ideas. Hello, it's one of my favorite subjects. Turn your clothes inside out. That, that's it. Everything else is normal. Well, the thing is, when, when you say traditional, there are several traditions that have Fey. Including ones where, like, you can appease them by giving them a piece of your pasty. Or you have to spit on your hand before shaking hands with them because they really hate dirty things. Combine the two by spitting on your pasty and throwing it at the fae. If possibly out of some kind of duck cannon, if you have one be available. I do feel like you could really mess around with some of the traditional stuff though like horseshoes what if you just expand that to anything associated with horses fairies just won't go near like you're yeah, yeah. being terrorized by archfey and everyone's just hiding in the stables you clear a path through the fairy army by just slapping a horse on the ass and chasing after it i feel like I just like the idea if you're wearing just really shitty, like, plastic horse mask. <laughs> or, like, one of those one of those rubber ones that everyone used to wear in, like, internet videos. Yeah. A, a fae can't get you if you go whinny in a monotone. I feel like there is an important question, though, if we do say that fae are repulsed by anything horse-related. Because I believe unicorns count as fey creatures. In They're the, deeply the self-loathing. Oh no! There's depressed unicorns and it's like, I can't believe I'm a fucking horse. <laughs> that is how a unicorn start all conversations. If a unicorn says anything else at the beginning of the conversation, 
it's not a real unicorn. The other idea is I like the idea that the reason unicorns have such respect among the Fae is because all the Fae are shit terrified of them because they're unicorns. Okay, it's, so it's less that they respect unicorns and more that they don't want to mess with them. Yeah. See, this to me creates a situation where maybe Faye would actually like you if you <laughs> slew a unicorn because you got rid of this thing, this monstrosity. <laughs> you don't trust it not to return from the grave. You get you get like um, a mission to kill a unicorn. It looks like it's from some sinister person who, like you know, is planning to kill a unicorn. They come back with unicorn horn, and a mysterious hooded figure just breaks into five pixies and goes, "We're free." <laughs> well, I'm going to be honest. Like the idea of using the whole like, ah, don't tell them anything real about you, and just using. Just an entire bard party that basically has to pretend that the whole mission is a play that they're putting on and completely ignore mm. the fact that they're actually taking damage. Because if they yeah. acknowledge that anything's really happening, the Fae will gain power over them. I do weirdly like the idea of, like, you're told, yeah, you can't give the Fae any information um, about yourself. Have you considered a VPN? And then the entire thing is a sponsor. <laughs> Genuinely, though, I feel like it would be an interesting challenge to just not say anything true in front of a fairy. Yeah. Or, like, convince them that other mm. things are true. Yeah, because everything you say to the fairy has to be lied. hate being lied to is that they... Because there's, there's the whole thing where they, they will tell you the truth, but they'll, like, twist it round. Yeah. So what if the whole thing is the reason they hate being lied to is they cannot lie and they mm. just think it's really shitty for you to do something that they can't. You and lie then you to turn a... that around by getting your non-magical players to just call them out. It's like, hey, <laughs> you're using magic and I can't, and that's not fair. I let you lie. If you lie to a fairy, it doesn't take vengeance on you. It just starts flying passive aggressively. I'm like, bet you can't do that, can you? Get, get called out by the fae. <laughs> The phase one weakness is they are vulnerable to call outs on Twitter. Which is, of course, just the network of bird noises that they use to yeah. communicate over long distances. Your fave is problematic, steals babies and replaces them with magical duplicates. I feel I like I like the idea of combining two, so you can't see anything true to the fave, but you are also can't see anything false to the fave. You have to make purely vague statements. Yes. Everything you say has to be just non-committal. So how about that weather? Actually, in the general demographic of D&D people, you can only communicate with the Fae in small talk. Would probably be a very difficult challenge. I mean, definitely among the ones that we know. Yes. I'm, I am including myself in this. I am very bad at small talk. You can't say thank you to a fae, and you extrapolate that to ha you have to be constantly massively rude to the fae. The, the real issue is responding to thank you with your welcome, because they'll, they'll take that as a blanket thing. Mm. So you, you have to say no problem instead. And that's why customers get really angry at people in retail who say no problem instead of you're welcome, because they're actually fey. <laughs> We're looking for a way in. Regrettably, capitalism has entered the fey wild, and your job is to stop um, Starbucks from infiltrating fairyland. I mean, when you think about it, dealing with the fey is basically just malicious compliance. Yeah. It's like, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna figure out the rules and then I'm gonna use them against you in the least obvious way that I can. So the campaign idea that popped into my head is Elder Fay like powerful Elder Fay and it's just your shitty manager at your um 
minimum wage job. And you have to sort of get through the working day without accidentally selling your soul to your boss. And I think that's probably a changeling the lost durance, which you can all have for free. Just imagining going into like a Feywild Starbucks and they ask for your name and then everyone just stands there really awkwardly. I so I love the power move of you go into a Starbucks, can I have your name? Yeah, it, it's Steve. Ha ha, fuck you, and he just then they just run off. <laughs> Perfect crime. <laughs> Not anymore, they yell, and then they then they just jump out the back and ride away on a coffee machine. I mean that does feel like a very fey thing to do. Like that that is some pic some um pixie nonsense. Yeah. So for a moment I forgot how to pronounce an X. Hmm. It, it happens. You possibly traded that ability to the Fey. Oh, so I let him go and thought, what's traditional Fey law? Oh, yes, Starbucks. That traditional institution of medieval Europe. To be fair, they just said Fey-themed mission, and it's still mm. based in it's still based in traditional fairy law, so I'm mm. counting it. Oh, so to be fair, like, Starbuck cups have been discovered from, like, Neolithic times, as far as we can tell, Starbucks has just always existed as long as humanity, and its current form is just its latest incarnation. The the main difference really is that in in the Feywild, it's rather than being named after a character from a book, it's named after the currency used by the gods. Yeah. Like, yeah, Starbucks has existed for as long as sentient life has. So, so we've learned that, so we've learned that they hate, um, hate horses, can't be spoken to just in general, and get very upset if you lie to them, because that's rude. Also don't like if you spit on their pasties. I mean, who does? <laughs> I mean, especially these days. Back in my day, we used to all spit on each other's food, and it was a grand old time. Remember before COVID, when you just walked up to your friends and spat on their food? Remember before COVID, when you could be a massive asshole? <laughs> so on on that beautiful note, I think <sighs> it's time to end the episode. Um by telling you that we have a Patreon um, if you want access to a Discord server where we play monthly one-shots based on sometimes stuff from the blog, sometimes stuff from the podcast. Um, but we, we, we have some fun one-shot times. You can go to patreon.com slash probably bad RPG ideas. Um, that's the basic level. You can also get access to bonus episodes and homebrew, which I believe the next homebrew to go up is going to be the Wild Magic Ranger. So that should be a fun one. Um, and, and remember, remember to have, have a probably bad, bad day. day. <laughs> Lieutenant Stavels. General Quackers Sergeant Flaps Lance Corporal Splashy The Right Honourable Flip Flap Major River Pigeon Reverend Damp Lord and Lady Flatfoot Earl Flappers